So hello, hello everyone. For anybody that missed my introduction, my name is Brandy and I am part of the details support team. And then I also have my colleague Miranda here as well. Um, and on the subject of her monitoring the chat there, um, if you guys have any questions during the uh, webinar, you can of course put them there and she'd be happy to answer those or keep them till the end when we do our open discussion. But I thank you guys for joining us today and I'm really excited to share with you guys the collections. Um, this is something that has been around for a little while now, but um, it's going to just help you guys stay organized and make everything a little bit easier. All right, so uh, it looks like we've kind of hit a plateau here with everybody coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and get started um, and I'm going to share my screen. All right, beautiful. So um, we're actually gonna start inside of an event and where we are right now is actually in the resources section under item gallery. So when you first come to this home page, you're gonna see what we're calling collections. You can think of these really like folders. They're gonna house your items. Um, you will see um, some of our partner collections here. We have Ball, Alexandra Farms, Alaska Peony Cooperative, Accent Decor. And then we've also added some new collections here, which is going to be the House of Stems collection and our Floral Mechanics collection. Um, so if you guys missed those announcements, we have these two new collections here for you to check out and utilize uh, throughout your events. While we are on the subject of our partners, though, we are going to be adding some new partners soon. So I just want you guys to keep an eye out for that. And then as we grow and collect more partners, we're going to add those collections here for you guys to utilize as well. So to start off, we're just going to talk about the existing collections. So we did discuss our partner collections here. Those are going to contain all of their items. Um, those are going to be updated by the company as well. So um, any pricing that you guys see in there is going to be the most up-to-date pricing for their products. Um, we also have what's called the My Items Collection and then the All Items Collection. So to start, the All Items Collection is going to house anything from our partner collections, anything that came preloaded in the software, and anything that you add. So this is going to be literally every item that's in your item gallery, um, pre-existing or things that you've added. In the My Items Collection, these are going to be items that you yourself have added, and then anything that you've edited from any of our partner collections. So um, if you go in and let's say you update um, inventory on a product or you update um, pricing or anything that might reflect uh, different pricing from your specific wholesaler, of course you're welcome to do that as well. And those items will then filter into your My Items collection. Um, <clears throat> So in order to create a collection, we're going to go ahead and click on the add new button here at the top of the screen and you'll see the option to add a new collection. So on this modal that pops up, you're going to be able to kind of customize what this collection looks like. So you can see that with our partner collections and then with the pre-existing collections, some my items and all items, those collections have um, kind of branded pictures on the front of them. And those are, uh, we actually created some of those in Canva, some of them were given to us by the partners themselves, but they're really easy to create and you can customize that to really fit your brand. Um, I know that we have one of our customers and actually um, one of our partners, Perry Donaldson, she's kind of gone in and customized all of the collections, uh, both the existing ones and the ones that she created herself and uh, really made them her own and branded them to her company. The benefit of that is that you're then going to be able to do a consultation, let's say via Zoom or even with your customer in the actual office um, and have that open so that they can see these collections. And it's just going to be a nice visual asset to that consultation. On this screen here, we are going to be able to put a collection title. For this example, we're going to name this Rentals. You have the option to show this title or not, if you're making a branded logo, I would recommend going ahead and putting in whatever the title of the collection is on the logo itself. And in that case, you won't need to show the title. Um, but if you're doing just a color background, you can go ahead and show that title there. Um, and in this case, ours is going to be uh, rentals. Um, 
Oops, whoop. There we go. So um, going down, you can also put a short description here for your collection. Um, what this does is it actually shows the description when you hover over the collection itself. It'll kind of marquee across the bottom there. Um, so you can choose to put that short description there or you can leave that blank as well. At the bottom here, you're going to see um, our background options. So as we talked about, you can either do a color background or you can choose an image. We're going to go ahead and select an image here. Um, our marketing team here has created a very nice little rentals collection photo that we're going to go ahead and use there. So I'll select use my image and then I'm going to not show that title because the image that I've chosen, I already went and put that name on there. So I'll go ahead and add this collection. And this is going to add it directly into um, my collections here at the bottom. Something to note, though, is that you can rearrange the way that these collections present. So let's just say you wanted the rentals at the top and maybe you want the partner collection at the bottom or vice versa, or maybe you want just a mixture of different um, arrangements. If you're not inside of an event, you'll see an option here in the upper right hand corner to drag and drop these around. So let's go ahead and exit out of this event and we're going to go and look at what that uh, will appear when you go to your collections. So from the main menu here, I'm going to go ahead and click on resources and I'll go over into my item gallery. So here in the item gallery, we're going to see exactly what we just saw when we were inside of an event, um, but this is now not going to be attached to an event. So I have now my drag and drop option where I can drag around my tiles. I can also, um, I don't have the option now to favorite any of these items onto my design board because um, we are not in an event. So going down here on my rentals collection, if I click into my rentals collection, you'll see that there are no items in here yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my gallery home. I can either click where it says gallery home, or I can also use the book icon to the left of where it says gallery home. Right now we're seeing that please wait logo. But if I use the book icon, I can go ahead and quickly navigate to any one of my collections here. So for example, if I click on it, I can easily go into Alaska Peony or my color collection or themes, whatever that happens to be. But this is great for easy navigation around your different collections. So since we're doing a rentals collection, I'm going to want to go ahead and um, grab some rentals. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and make what's called sub collections. Before we do that in our rentals collection, though, I want to just go ahead and look, show you what that could look like um, with a whole bunch of different graphics on there and really making it your own. So if I click into the color collections, which is something that you guys have in your account, um, and you can utilize these collections just as you would any other collection. Um, and we've turned that on globally so that you guys can also use that. But you can see that I've created a whole bunch of different sub collections based on color scheme. And then within each collection, it's gonna have blue items or burgundy items or pink items. Um, so you can make as many sub collections as you would like. And just like before, when we were talking about making those custom graphics for the collections themselves, you can make custom graphics for your sub collections as well. So let's go ahead into our rentals collection and we're going to make a couple of different sub collections. So the process for this is exactly the same as it would be if we were uh, creating a collection here in the main gallery home. However, the difference is that when I click on the rentals and I select add new from there, I now have the option to do either new collection or new item. So you don't have to make sub collections, but we do find that it creates um, better organization here. So we're going to go ahead and create a couple of new collect new sub collections. The same box is going to appear here. Um, for these examples, I don't have a graphic. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my name and add that collection there. I can also do let's say a new collection for my faces. And then we'll do one for 
our linens. And again, you guys, these are going to be completely customizable. So um, your collections are going to look totally different from somebody else's. And how you like to organize things is going to be, again, different than um, some other florists. So however you choose to organize them is up to you. So let's go ahead and I'm going to search in my all items and we're going to start with our chairs. So now what we're doing is going to be the process of moving items from, uh, let's say, our main gallery. So like our all items and our my items, and I'm going to move that into my new sub collection that I created within my rentals collection. So um, I want to take everything that is marked as a chair here in my item gallery and move that over to my chair sub collection. So I'm going to click on the options menu at the bottom, click on selection mode. I can either go ahead and individually select items, or I can click the more button at the bottom and select all. So now that I've selected all of my items here, I'm going to go ahead and copy them. Similar to how we have a design board, you also have a clipboard uh, contents area. So all of those items that we copied are now going to be on my clipboard. So to move these items into my chairs subcategory, I'm going to go ahead and click into my chair sub collection and click the paste button. Depending on how many items you have, it may take a moment to move those items from point A to point B, but they'll all filter in here just as you would see them in your my items or all items, or wherever else you have these located. Um, one of the questions that we see an awful lot is if I move something from one collection to another, does that mean it moves completely or is it a copy? So it is a copy. So now it lives in both this chair subcategory or sub, excuse, excuse me, sub collection. And it also lives in uh, my all items and my items if I have them in my items as well. Um, so you can have these in multiple different locations. For example, if I then want to move these red chairs over to my red collection, I can do that as well. So um, multiple ways to different categorize each of your items here, and um, they're just copies of the other items. So going back here to my rentals collection, I now see that I also want to fill out my bases, and I want to go ahead and put linens in my linens category as well. So um, what we want to do first and foremost is going to be to clear our clipboard contents here. So I'm going to go to the menu button and click clear clipboard. That way it won't duplicate those items again in my basis category after I've gone to go gather those items as well. So going back, I'm going to go ahead and go to the search button. I'm going to go to the all items here and then instead of searching chairs i'm going to go ahead and do let's say i want to do my basis and rentals next and click that search button so again i'm just going to kind of do that same process for each one of these different sub collections adding these items from one location to another um, again i can choose to select a few items or I can select multiple items at once. So I'm going to go ahead and select all items and give it a minute here since there are so many items here in this particular collection it may take a moment for them to add over onto my clipboard um, so we'll give it that time there. Oop, looks like there were way too many. Let me go ahead and refresh my page here. One of the things that I really love about working in software is that you really just never know what you're going to get. And, uh, you know, there are oftentimes little hiccups here. So, all right. Thank you, everybody, for bearing with me for a moment. And we're going to just get right back to where we were. And we're going to go to resources and item gallery. So again, once we're in our item gallery here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the basis and rentals there. I'm going to click the search button. I'm going to locate all of the items that I want to use in my uh, rentals collection in 
the basis sub collection, and I'm going to move all those items over. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and click selection mode, and I'm going to select some of my bases here. Again, um, these items are now going to live in both this collection, the my items collection, and wherever I end up moving them to, which is going to be my bases sub collection. So let's go ahead and go back here and I'm going to go to my rentals collection and linens. And now I'm going to go ahead and paste that. So you kind of get that concept there of moving things from point A to point B. Uh, fairly simple there. It may take you a little bit of time to get everything kind of organized in here. But once you do have everything organized, it's going to be so much easier to, drag, to grab all those items um, that you're going to use in a specific event. For example, if I go over here, I'm going to go back to my event list and we're going to create an event. Um, so we're going to kind of do this two ways, one of which is going to be that um, we can create a new client. And I'm going to go into their event. And let's say, for example, I have a previous wedding that I wanted to use. And as we know, we can, of course, use those worksheet templates if we wanted. But I would also recommend that you make a collection of your previous events as well. So we have done that in our resources in our item gallery. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take an entire collection and move that onto my design board so that I can use that in my event. So let's say I want to go into my past weddings here. And instead of going into the uh, collection itself, I can go ahead and click options, selection mode. Maybe I want to do Avery and Jeff. I'm going to go to more again. And then I can add that whole collection or sub collection as it were to my favorites. Um, once this adds over to my design board, I'm then going to be able to follow the same process that I normally would when creating an event, which is going to be to drag and drop those items over onto the worksheet um, to use in the event. So you'll see here on the left hand side on my design board, everything that I had in that collection, vases and rentals, blooms, hard goods, anything that I might have had in there. Um, I'm now going to be able to just easily click that entire collection and add it over to my design board. Um, vice versa, though, if I have a worksheet and um, I've created this beautiful event, I wanted to save all of the items into a sub collection, similar to how I've done here, what I can do is I can have all of my design board items here, I can go to menu, and then I can add this as a new collection. So I'm just going to click on the create collection button. <clears throat> And that's going to create me a new unnamed collection that now houses all of the items that were on my design board. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and add here. And there are all of our items. So you can kind of do it both ways where you want to either um, use a past weddings items and move it to your design board, or you can take all the items from a certain event and move them into a collection. Um, so very versatile here as far as what you can do with it. Um, I highly recommend making more collections or sub collections than you think you'll need um, rather than less and you can really get crazy with it and I highly recommend that you do. Um, Anything that's already in here though, so we talked earlier about how one of our clients has gone in and adjusted all of our existing um, collections here and swapped them out for new photos that were more branded to their company. Um, so the way that you would do that is any one of our collections here, you can click on the edit button in the upper right hand corner and you can choose to either um, select a different image, you can change this to a color background instead, you can change the descriptions. If you don't like the name all items, you can change that as well. Um, so anything that's already existing in your account, you can change and customize to fit your brand. Um, and again, if you're going to do those consultations with your client, which I think that a lot of people during COVID um, 
were limiting their consultations or maybe their consultation was more due over the phone or um, via email. And this is a really great option um, to kind of still have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with your client. They can see the items, they can see you know, your recipes, whatever that happens to be um, in a consultation via Zoom, similar to how we're doing right now on our webinar. Uh, going down here, I did want to mention, though, that we have created some wonderful collections here. So, for example, just to give you guys some uh, kind of pennies for thought, if you will, on things that you can do, we have one that's called themed collections. This is going to house things such as, you know, the nautical theme or boho themed, um, things of that nature. We've kind of gone a little crazy with it with an Easter collection, a fall collection, um, things of that nature. And then again, if these are going to be things that you're using year after year, so let's say you have things that you're using for Easter arrangements or uh, Christmas installations, um, you can put all those items here for you to use in future uh, years, future events, etc. Same thing, uh, if we go back to the gallery home, we've done the seasonal collections. So we can do our fall, winter, summer, spring. You can do different trends in the industry. So if you see a trend that's happening a lot, so like the blush wedding that we saw, I hear that tangerine is becoming a big thing now. Um, you can come in here, create a trends collection or sub collection to fit in with those. And then when your bride comes to you and says, you know, I really wanna have a blush wedding or I really wanna have, um, you know, that succulent theme or, um, you know, and whatever the trend happens to be at that time, you can say, oh, well, you know, I really have a collection of items already fit and put together. We can go through and look at them. And then you can just go down the list and favorite, 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 as many of those as um, your client wants. And it just gives that extra touch for you to kind of get that interaction with the client. They can see what the flowers are really going to look like based on the photos that you have in your item gallery. And then um, I think they feel a little bit more like they had uh, a place in planning um, as opposed to you doing all the work. <laughs> all right. So um, that is everything for our item gallery collections here. Um, I did I think I want to go ahead and just kind of open this up for questions here before I move on to um, color collections. So if anybody has a question that they want to jump on, please feel free to unmute yourself and we'd be happy to go over that together. Could you just remind us how to put a past wedding into the collection? I did it a while ago, but I don't remember how I did it. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, Thanks. let me go ahead and go into um, an event that I already have created here. All right. So, let's just say that Penny here had a really great wedding. We really loved all of her blooms. She had some really great colors going on. And uh, you think that this is going to be something that you want to use down the road. So all of her items are now over onto my design board. And um, if those items are not on the design board, I did want to mention that you can go to the options menu and click on favorite all items. And anything that's not already on there will now go ahead and uh, move on to that design board. From there, I'm going to go ahead and go to my resources, item gallery. And since I already have a collection named past weddings, I'm going to go ahead and go into that past weddings folder or collection as it were. I'm going to go ahead and click menu, create collection. And now I have my unnamed collection here. So I'm going to click into that collection and then go to menu and add here. And that's going to move all of those items into this new sub collection. Um, once I have all those items in there, of course, I would recommend going back into um, your past events collection and just renaming this. Um, so let's just say, since this was pennies, we want to do pennies peony party. 
and save those changes. So now I've got all of Penny's products in there so that when somebody else comes in with the same kind of style theme, whatever that happens to be, um, I can go ahead and open up that collection and look through that with them. All right, does anybody else have any questions? All righty then. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, go over color collections. We did go over this a little bit in our last tips and tricks webinar, um, but I think because it's so new that we have a lot of questions about our color selector and um, the collections within. So we're going to go ahead and go through that a little bit more right now before we wrap everything up today. So on our color selector here, um, we now have the option to add a color to a collection. So um, what that does is it's gonna create, let's say your color story. Maybe I wanna do a fall color collection. I can click on add to collection. I can either choose from any of the ones that I've already created, or I can create a new collection. Down at the bottom here, I now have that new collection here and I can rename this fall collection. And as I get more and more colors here that I wanna to add to that collection, I can go ahead and select them and click on that add to collection button. Alternatively, any one of these different sections, so for example, uh, my suggestions. This is gonna give me all of my suggestions here, tint, shades, monochromatic, you name it, it's here. Um, and you can go ahead and click on the drop down menu and create a collection of any one of these different sets of colors. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the drop down menu, create collection, and it's automatically going to create that collection for me. Again, I can go in and click and change the name. This is just going to be our test collection and click out. Um, later on down the road, if you wanted to use any one of these collections in your event, you can easily click the drop down menu and click on the select all button. What that does is it adds it to your selection for this event. Um, previously, when we had our uh, previous color palette, you were going to open the box, select your color, click done, and then it would populate that singular color. However, now we've added the option to add multiple colors to your selection. So, for example, if I wanted to add this entire Easter collection, I would click on the drop down menu, select all, and it would move that entire collection over into my selection. So if I go over to my selection, you'll see that it's added that collection over into my selection. Um, so that's gonna now add it to my palette for this particular event. When we go back and talk about, let's say, past events in the sense that we're creating those collections, you can also create collections of those past event colors as well. So, um, for example, if I wanted to save this particular palette that we used for Penny's Peony Party, um, I can go ahead and create that collection here and name that Peony's Penny Penny's Peony Party. <laughs> and um, then when I go to go add that collection to my design board, I can also then go here to my worksheet and add that collection in as well. Um, so it does save you quite a bit of time from let's say gathering all those items, gathering all those colors and everything. Um, and all you'll need to really do is go here and do the actual designing and not spend all the time collecting your items for an event that you know you've already created a, almost an exact twin previously. Um, so you can go in here and create those collections. And of course, going back to our collections here, um, one of the fun things about these collections now is that you can also change out your quick colors. So previously you had a set of quick colors. It was your normal colors, red, blue, green, pink, whatever that happens to be. Um, but now you can change that out. So for example, I've named this collection quick colors. And if I click on my rabbit here at the bottom, you'll see that those colors are now my quick colors. Any collection that you name quick colors um, will automatically be added here to your quick colors menu. This can be quick colors in addition to any other word. So fall quick colors, Easter quick colors. Um, as long as it has the two words quick colors, it's gonna be added here to your quick colors menu. So I think that is pretty cool and probably one of my favorite features um, is the collections and then the ability to change out those quick colors. 
You can also take any one of these collections here and uh, remove it from this menu. And then if you wanted to add any of these singular colors to your favorites, you'll click on that color here. You'll see it's added up at the bottom and I can add that to my favorites there. All right, does anybody have any questions on color collections? Let me go ahead and open up my chat here. It looks like Miranda has been adding in quite a few different um, articles here. And it looks like Deborah had a question here. So Deborah's question is, is there a way to organize recipes like you can organize items? So currently we don't have collections for recipes. However, we do have um, the ability to create your own custom categories. So um, you can go in and create any one of those categories that you'd like, and that kind of gives you the ability to customize uh, your organization, if you will, because on the search menu, you can narrow down your search based on the category. So, for example, if you wanted to do vases, and it would be all of your recipes that are like centerpieces, things of that nature, um, you could do that. You can also do anything else that you want, flower girl, headdresses, dog flowers, whatever that happens to be for you guys. Um, so there is some organization in the recipe gallery, but it is different than there is in the item gallery itself. Does anybody else have a question here? And thank you, Deborah, for that question. Yeah, of course, my pleasure. Happy to answer that for you. All right. Well, this does wrap up our collections today. Um, it was a little bit of a short webinar today, so we will be having the recap here and that's gonna be sent out via email. There's also gonna be a follow-up survey per usual. So if you guys wouldn't mind filling out that survey there, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, and I really wanna know what you guys would like to see next in an upcoming Tips and Tricks webinar. So please give me all of your feedback and what you'd like to see. Thank you so much, everybody, and uh, I hope to see you guys at our next Tips and Tricks webinar. If you guys are not signed up, we do also have a webinar coming up, uh, or excuse me, a master class coming up with Kristen Alpo, and she is um, the brains behind the operation at House of Stems. So we're going to learn a little bit more about her journey in the floral industry, and then um, more about her coveted eritherians. So uh, if you're not signed up, we highly recommend joining me. It's going to be really fun. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful day.